Hello everyone. My name is Yasunori Goto from Fujitsu. I and Ransan will talk about the forefront of the development for innovating on Linux kernel. Here is the agenda. At first, I'd like to talk about a summary of current status of development for NVIDIA. It is basis of NVIDIA on Linux and issues of file system DAX. DAX means direct access mode. Next, Luan-san will talk about a deep dive to solve the issues of file system DAX, support reflink and delete for FS DAX, and fix NVIDIA based reverse mapping. Then, I'll finalize with conclusion. Let me introduce myself. I have worked for Linux and related OSS since 2002. I developed for memory hot plug feature of Linux kernel and technical support for troubles over it, and etc. And currently, I'm leader of Fujitsu Linux kernel development team. And in the few years, I have mainly worked for NVDM. Some enhancement for loss of NVDM. For example, fault location or fault prediction. Okay, let's start basis of NVDM on Linux. Here is the characteristics of non-volatile DIMM. It is a persistent memory device which can be inserted to DIMM slot like DRAM. CPU can read or write NVDIMM directly, but it can keep data persistency even if system is powered down or rebooted. Though its access latency is slower than DRAM, it is faster than NVDME. It has a huge amount than DRAM, and its use case is in memory database, hierarchical storage, distributed storage, on etc. So, as you know, its most famous product is Intel Data Center Persistent Memory Module. Impact of NVDM is that traditional IO layer becomes redundant for NVDM. At first, page cache becomes redundant. It was created for slow IO storage but NVDM is fast enough without page cache. Next, any sync system call is redundant. If a user process calls CPU plus instruction, then it's enough to make persistency. In addition, system call is redundant because application can read or write to NVDM directly, like RAM. Then, even system call may be a waste of time due to switching between kernel mode and user mode. So, new interface is expected for NVIDIA. However, NVIDIA is difficult for traditional software because many software assume that memory is volatile yet. Please imagine what will be necessary for a software to use NVIDIA. At first, you need to prepare for sudden power down because CPU cache is still volatile. If system power down suddenly, then some data may not be stored. Next, you need data structure compatibility on NVIDIA. You should not change data structures in NVIDIA. If the structures are changed, software update will be cause of disaster. In addition, you need to detect or correct clasping data. If the data is broken, software needs to detect it and correct it. Finally, you need data area management. Software needs to assign not only free area, but also used area for reuse its data. In addition, kernel must assign the area to suitable process with authority check. So, there is a confliction of requirements. File system is still useful, 
because file system gives many solutions for the previous consideration, like format compatibility of file system, data collection, journaling or copy and write, region management, authority check, and, and, and so on. It's useful for current software. However, file system is too slow. As I said, traditional I.O. stack is too heavy. And CPU cache flash is enough to make persistency. So, we need new access interface to the NVMe for next generation software. Because of previous reasons, Linux provides some interfaces for application. The first is storage access. Application can access NVDIM with traditional I.O. interface like SSD or HDD. So application can use this mode without any modification. The second is file system DAX. Page cache is skipped when you use read or write on file system DAX. Application can access NVDIM area directly if it calls MA for a file. But it it needs file system support like XFS or ext4. This mode is suitable for modifying current application for NVIDIA. Third mode is device DAX. Application can access NVIDIA area directly if it calls MAPS for device dev slash dev slash DAX. It allows only open, mAP, and close. In other words, you cannot use read or write nor any other system call for the device. It is for innovative new application with NVIDIA. And finally, PMDK is provided. It is a set of library and tools for file system DAX and device DAX. NVDIM is shown as device files like storage. For storage access, slash dev slash pmm who bar s is created. For file system DAX, slash dev slash pmm is created, and device DAX, slash dev slash DAX is created. ND control command can create this device when it creates namespace. Here is the example of file system DAX. ND control create namespace command creates slash dev slash pmem0. You can make file system on slash dev slash pmem s or slash dev slash pmem. Please note, device DAX is character device. Since you cannot use read or write for device DAX, you cannot use DD command for backup. As I said, PMDK is a set of libraries and tools for file system DAX and device DAX. It includes many libraries and language bindings and tools. It is for not only Linux, but also you can use PMDK on Windows. I would like to introduce some of them. The first is libpmm. It is a low layer library. It calls mmap to use nvdim and calls suitable CPU cache flash instruction and etc. libpmm object is a high layer library which supports transaction of the object on DAX. It is for general use case and it's highly recommended library in PMDK, but users need to understand how to use its transaction. As I said, device DAX is a character device. Then you cannot use DD for backup. So DAX IO command is provided instead of it. I'd like to introduce two newer libraries of PMDK. The first is libpmm2. It is a new low-layer library. It introduces a new concept, granularity. P 
km granularity page is for traditional SSD or HDD. PMM2 granularity cache line is for persistent memory. It's the case for pay process needs flash cache to make persistence. The third is interesting. PMM2 granularity byte is for persistent memory too, but the, it's for the case for platform support CPU cache persistence. It introduces new functions to get unsafe shutdown status and bat block. This library uses the library of entry control command internally to get this information. Unfortunately, its interface is different from old libpmem. The second new library is librpma. It's a new library for RDMA. The first library for RDMA is librpmem but its experimental status due to no user. librpma is created with user's requirement. There's a difference between all the librpmm provides and customer's expectation. Here's a quote of its uh, librpma uh, presentation. And currently, official release of main library of uh, this library is planned at Quarter first, 2021. I need to say file system DAX is still experimental status. It is very expected interface. The management way of NVDM is almost the same with traditional file system. Operator can use traditional command to manage NVDM area. If application call mmap for a file on file system DAX, then it can access to NVDM directory. In contrast, device DAX requires pull management by tools of PMDK. Otherwise, a software needs to possess whole of the namespace. However, the experimental messages is shown when the file system is mounted with DAX option. Because there are some issues in kernel layer. So experimental status has been for a few years. So in this talk, I would like to talk why it's experimental yet and what is the obstacles. Okay, let's start issues of file system tax. What is solved and what is current issues? In summary, there are two big reasons. First is that file system tax combines storage and memory characteristics. This causes corner case issues of file system tax. The second is a more additional feature was required but it is or it was difficult to make it. The first issue is configure DAX on and off for each inode, like directory or file. Second is coexistence with copy and write file system. So let me introduce uh, corner case issues. Most important problem is updating metadata of the files. In file system DAX, we expected that application can make persistent data with only CPU cache flaws, uh, as I said. However, this also means there is no chance to update metadata by kernel or file system. As a result, update time of the file may not be correct. If an application uses write some data to file on the file system DAX and a user removes some blocks on the file by truncate system call, can cannot negotiate it. So data of the de data of the file may be lost. If data transferred by DMA or RDMA to the page which is allocated as file system DAX, similar problem may occur.
Here is the current status of these issues. For general right access, it was solved by introducing new map sync flags of Nmap. When it's, it's, it is specified, page fault is occurred when right access, then kernel update metadata at the time. PMDK already specifies these flags. For RDMA or DMA data access, for kernel or driver layer, it's solved. It can wait truncate until flushing, uh, finishing RDMA. However, user process layer like InfiniBand or a video card, it was not solved. It is not solved. Truncate cannot wait the completion of transfer because it may too long time. Fortunately, there's a workaround. It's on-demand paging. In ODP, usually driver or hardware does not map the pages of DMA or RDMA area for application. And it maps the pages when application access them. Then, kernel or driver can coordinate metadata at this time. Meralinux newer card has such feature. Next issue is DAX on and off for each inode. Here is the expected use cases. The first is need more fine grain settings. Users may want to change the DAX mode depending on each file. The second is change DAX attribute by application. Configuration is always painful for administrator. Then if application can detect and change it, it will be helpful for them. The third is performance tuning. Since the write latency of NVD is a bit slower than RAM, user may want to use page cache by DAX off settings. Finally, it is good for workaround when file system DAX has a bug. So what is the problem? If file system changes DAX mode attribute, file system needs to change method of file system between DAX and normal file, but they may be executed yet. And the data of page cache must be moved silently when the DAX attribute becomes off. These problems was very difficult. Fortunately, it was solved. And how it was solved here? The DAX attribute is changed only when its inode cache is not loaded on memory. File system can load suitable methods for each attribute when it reloads inode to memory. So page cache of the fi file are also dropped. User can use this feature with a new mount option, a mount hyphen or DAX equal inode. The DAX attribute is changed by this command, like uh, for this is a XSF example. XSIO hyphen C change attribute plus X is DAX on and minus X is for uh, DAX off. Please note the followings. All of applications which use the target file must close it to change the DAX attribute. File system will postpone changing the DAX attribute until dropping inode cache and page cache of the files. So currently, administrator may need to operate drop cache to achieve it yet, like echo 3 and proxy slash c slash vm drop caches because inode cache may remain due to race condition. However, this operation affects four of page cache and slabs of the system. So we are trying to solve this problem. We made a patch, we made patches to evict inode and d entry cache as soon as possible when the DAX attribute is changed. 
It said I don't cash flag and D cash don't cash for it. Then think I know before everything I know. The final issue is co existing with copyright file system like referring dedupe of XFS or ButterFS. In this feature, if there is the same data block on different files, file system can merge it as same block. So far, if only file system managed such block, it was enough. But in file system DAX, it becomes not enough. The first problem is that memory management layer also needs to understand merged block. Reverse mapping for plural files are necessary. A merged block has only one struct page, but there is no way to how to save offset of plural files. Very difficult. Second is need to enhance IO map and file system DAX for copy and write. IO map is a newer interface instead of block IO layer. In other words, struct buffer head. It can lock and submit I.O. for plural pages at once. File system DAX depends on I.O. map feature, but it does not support copy and write. Though XF, XFS already use I.O. map, but FS also needs to use it. Ransom will talk how to solve them. Okay, it's my turn to talk about how to solve the issues of file system DAX. I will do it in two parts. The first is how to support reflink slash dedupe for file system DAX. The second is how to improve the NVDIM based reverse mapping. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ran Shiyang. I'm a software engineer of Fujis Nanda. I used to work in embedded system. And currently, I'm focusing on Linux file system and persistent memory. Here is the background of the issues we need to solve out. Currently, FSDAX is still in experimental status. It is because that Reflink and FSDAX cannot work together. Uh, here we try to use them together and see what will happen. Firstly, create a new XFS file system with reflink feature enabled, and try to mount it with DAX option. Then, the error message will be shown like this. After a little investigation, we found that the D message told us the reason. DAX on XFS is experimental. It cannot be used together with reflink. So, what are reflink and FS DAX? why they cannot be worked together. I will explain in the next pages. What is reflink? It is a file system feature that files can share their extents for same data block. For example, copy file A to file B. The normal copy will take some time to duplicate data extent. Each file will have its own data extent. As a result, the larger file we copy, the longer time it will cost. But what will happen with the reflink copy? We execute com copy command with a reflink equals always flag. It will finish immediately because it won't duplicate any data extent for file B. Just map its data range to file A. So it won't cost more time or occupy more disk space, even file is very large. As we key, Reflink has two advantages, fast copy and safe storage. Since these two files are sharing data extents, what happens if we, if we want to write some data to the file B? In order to prevent both files from being modif modified, we need a copy on write mechanism here. It copies the shared data extent before new data is written. This process is shown in the figure below. 
when we are going to write data on file B. The system will allocate new extent and copy data from the extent 1 to the new extent. Then write user data into it. At last, remap the new extent to file B. Uh, so this is reflink. And uh, what is FSDAX? Uh, it's also called file system DAX. FSDAX is a mode of uh, NVDIM namespace. In this mode, page cache will be removed from the IO path. It also allows MMAP to establish direct mappings to persistent memory media. So, why Reflink and FSDAX cannot work together? We have investigated this problem in DIPS. We found two main issues. Firstly, we need to enhance IO map and FSDAX for copy on write mechanism. The IO map interface needs to be extended to support copy on write. The implementation of copy on write should be added in FSDAX. Five systems should also adapt to the new IO map interface and support coexisting of the two features. Secondly, memory management layer also needs to understand merged block. To achieve this, we need to improve the current MDM based reserve mapping. I will explain how we solve these issues in the next few moments. Let's start with the first issue. We need to enhance IOMAP and FSDAX for copy on write. Let's take a look why we need to enhance it. Look at uh, the flowchart on the right. The normal write will firstly load the data from disk to page cache, then write the data on the page cache, and finally flush the page cache to the disk. This process implies a copy on write mechanism. But in FSDAX mode, as is mentioned before, page cache is removed from IO path. Data will be written without a copy. As a result, the data block in which the data is written will be incomplete. So, to solve this issue, what must be implemented? As we know, XFS uses IOMAP model. It implements IOMAP begin and IOMAP end. The FSDAX implements actual interface. Reflink is implemented by XFS. New extent will be allocated in IOMAP begin. But it also needs to store source extent for copy on write. In actual interface, the whole copy on write mechanism needs to be added. Copy source data from source extent to new extent allocated in IOMAP begin, and write user data in it. Finally, the new extent should be remapped to the file. Otherwise, it, it seems nothing is changed when we read the file to check whether the data have been written. In summary, we need to enhance the current framework in these three levels, IOMAP, FSDAX, and XFS. Uh, let's start from IOMAP. IOMAP model provides a structure named uh, IOMAP to store the distance where the data to be written. IOMAP begin allocates the new extent and fill its properties to the IOMAP structure. But it is not enough for copy or write mechanism. The copy or write also needs the source extent info, such as start block number, which means where to copy from, the length, which means how long to be copied, and maybe some others. So, we introduced a new type of IO map to distinguish copy on write with normal write, and add another structure IO map called source map 
to remember and pass the source extent info through the whole IOMAP progress. The code diff is shown as below. After creating the new source map, what we need to do is to fill its members. The structure IOMAP is always filled at the end of IOMAP begin. The structure source map is only filled when it is sheer extent. If it contains real data, then store the extent info into the source map and set the type to be IOMAP copy on write. In this way, the copy on write is able to execute in the write path and a map path. Let's see the write path. First of all, the DEX driver provides a, inter, an interface called direct access to translate the offset in block device to physical, physical memory address in persistent memory. With this feature, read or write data can be easily replaced with memory copy function. So in the write path, when the IOMAP copy on write is set, which indicates it needs copy on write executed, we can use this interface to obtain the address of source extent from the source map and then memory copy the source data to distant extent. After that, memory copy the user data to the distant extent. In the mmap path, we will get a virtual address by mmapping a file. Writing at the virtual address will cause page fault. FSDAX supports PT fault and PMD fault. The page fault handler uses IOMAP model as well. So, adding source map for a map path is similar with adding it for write path. Just translate source address by direct access from the source map and memory copy source data to distance extent. The final step, the final step is a bit different. Just associate the page to the VMA. The write part of copy on write will be done in user space. Duplicate is another important mechanism for reflink. It allows the exist files to share same data extent in order to save storage. It requires a compare function. For normal mode, the general dedupe function compares data in page cache. But it is not suitable to FSDAX mode because of no page cache. So we introduced a DAX compare function for FSDAX. Again, we use direct access to get address of two data extents and then use memory compare function to compare whether they are same. If same, it means that the two files can share the data extent. However, we should pay attention to check if the two files are both enable FS DAX or neither. File with different DAX flags cannot be dedup deduped. At last, we also need to remap the new extent to the file or clean up if error occurs. Till now, we are able to make reflink and fsdax work together in the write path and the mmap path. However, it just looks functionable on the surface. In deeps, there is another issue needs to be fixed. We usually think of NVDIM in FSDAX mode as a block device. So we can see files share same data extent because of reflink. But it 
but、uh, since it is NVD, we also need to think of it as a memory device. In another word, files are sharing the same memory pages. So the memory management layer also needs to understand the shared block. As a memory device, NVD may fail in hardware level. That means the page is broken and cannot be accessed anymore. The system triggers memory failure to handle this. When memory failure occurs, the system will track all processes associating with the broken page, and then send signal to kill those processes. The track from memory page to a file is usually called reverse mapping. In this case. We call it NVD-based reverse mapping. The current NVD-based reverse mapping can only support one page to one file mapping. However, for reflink, because files are sharing the same page, we need to improve it to support one page to multiple files mapping. To solve this problem, I have thought of many ways. Here is the approach to solve this. Each idea is based on the results of the previous one. In idea one, I created a DEXRMAP arbitrary to store more file mappings, which caused huge overhead. I reduced the overhead in idea two by introducing storage lost interface. Furthermore. In idea three, I remove the useless overhead caused by storage lost, and add interface to support more than SDX mode. Let's start from idea one. To support one to multiply mapping, the first thought is to store more file mappings in one page. The old implementation uses pages mapping to store file mapping, and pages index to store its offset. It can only store one file mapping, so I introduced a DEXRMAP arbitrary to store more file mappings. To save memory usage, we associate file mapping and offset to pages mapping and pages index at the first time. It's same as old implementation. Because the page is shared with many files, the DEXRMAP arbitrary will be created at the second time associating, and insert file mapping and offset as the, the trees node at the second time and later. The arbitrary's root is stored in the unused member pages private. At the second time associating, it is to distinguish if a page is associated only once or more times. If it if it is twice or more times, the page index is used as reference count. After associating, it is ready to reverse track in memory failure. As is shown in the figure on the right, the memory failure gets broken page locked first. Then it reads files mapping's mmap to find VMAs of processes. Collect a list of processes need to be killed. Then unmap those page mappings and kill processes. Finally, unlock the page and exit. With the DEXRMAP arbitrary, we only need to add an iteration of it outside the process tracking. This double iteration makes one to multiply reverse mapping possible.、Uh, however, in some cases, each page may contain one DEXRMAP arbitrary, which may cause huge overhead. It should not be underestimated. Also, this per-page tracking method only works for file 
because the association only supports five. Metadata cannot be handled if the memory failure hits on it. To reduce the huge overhead while still being able to build a reverse mapping, we then look into the file system feature. XFS has a feature called RMAPB tree, which records the owners of each data extent. The owner could be file, metadata, and uh, other file system data. So we introduced a file system interface called storage lost to return an owner list instead of the DEX RMAP RB tree is to reduce the huge overhead. The interface is implemented by file system. Uh, firstly, query the RMAP B tree for owners of the broken block one by one. And uh, secondly, return a list of owners for the memory failure use. The association could be very simple. Just uh, store the file system's superblock in page's mapping as the specific color when we execute tracking. And store reference count in page's zone device data. It is not used uh, in memory failure case before. The track process is similar with the previous. The difference is calling storage lost to create an owner's list. This list is used for tracking from page to file mappings. Then iterate each file mappings I am map to track processes. The rest part is same as previous. In this way, the huge overhead has been reduced. Uh, however, it still leaves a little overhead. We need extra memory space for the owner's list. It's better to remove the overhead completely. Instead of creating the owner's list, we handle every owner during the query. We still call storage lost to query owners of the broken block. Since the file system queries owners one by one, we can call memory failure handler to handle each owner when it is found. Then, as usual, track owners I am mapped to find the VMAs of processes. Uh, as a result, the extra memory space is not necessary and uh, removed. The one to multiply reverse mapping is implemented. Furthermore, there is room for improvement. Currently, memory failure can only support FS DAX mode. It is necessary to make it a common fault handler for NVD. In order to support more than FS DAX mode, we dive into driver level. We introduced a driver interface called memory failure for each kind of NVD device. <coughs> the PMEM device is implemented by calling storage lost and uh, the DEX device is going to be finished in the future. The one to multiply reverse mapping has been implemented so far. There is uh, no useless overhead. With the memory failure interface, it is compatible for all NVIDIA modes. With the storage lost interface, it is compatible for all five systems. But currently, there are some remaining difficulties. Uh, the first one is that the PMEM driver can not obtain file system from LVM or other mapped device. We can use get super function to get file system, which is created directly on the device. But 
it is not suitable for Mac device. So uh, some other method needs to be found. Uh, the second one is that the storage lost requires five system has a feature like RMAP v tree to track owners from block. For example, the real time device of XFS doesn't support it. So we cannot track for real time device for now. Uh, and so does other file systems. Conclusion. We talked about the following basis of NVDM for Linux and issues of file system docs. And deep dive to solve issues of file system docs, support reflink and delete for FS docs, and fix NVDM based reverse mapping. Community has made many enhancements for NVDM on Linux, and we have worked for NVDM to remove experimental status of file system docs. We expect it will be achieved soon. Thank you very much for listening.